Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I'm tired of singing it. Hey everybody, guess who this is? Me. I'm like a bad penny, I keep turning up. Here I am again, and uh, it's another night to hear at GabNet, and I thought I'd spend the first half hour talking with you, okay? I don't know why. I, I uh, 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 um, let me see here, where do I start? I put up a thing earlier tonight uh, on my Facebook page, and I took it off. I, th I started thinking about it, and I, you know. I was very depressed after last night's show because we did our last episode with, uh, with our uh, friend uh, Jack Garfine and his stories about being in uh, Auschwitz. Uh, last night was the Auschwitz show. And um, when we first had the interview with him, uh, we got several hundred uh, people who watched it uh, within a very short amount of time, and I was amazed with the amount of people who watched it. And then the next week, it kind of went down, and last night, it was like it almost didn't exist at all. We had some of the worst uh, video numbers that we've had in quite a while. And that really bothered me, because I think that the subject matter was so important, and so dealing with things that we have to deal with today that I, uh, I, was, I was really bothered by the lack of interest in what we had to do. Now, I don't know. There may be something going on over at uh, YouTube or at Facebook or whatever in which they're getting very sensitive about stuff and it's hard to get higher numbers. And they, I don't know what the story is. I don't know why all of a sudden the audience seems to have kind of disappeared. But um, uh, certainly last night, if there was any... Also, whenever I have um, 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 Will Durst on, uh, those shows, he, he gets very high numbers, okay? Uh, we get... At one time, there were like about almost 300 people uh, that watched just the replays of that show rather than just the show that was on the air. And that doesn't include all the people that would listen to it on a given day, uh, through the various audio sources that we have, and so on. And and this week it was just, huh? You know, I was kind of waiting for Will to be on because the last time he was on, the, the numbers were just incredible. And I, I can't believe that an audience has suddenly disappeared overnight, okay? Excuse me, I'm belching a little bit here. Uh, so I can't understand what the, you know, what the problem is. Uh, and it, it gets depressing and vexing. So today I, I said to girlfriend, I said, I just think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit putting this thing up live on video. Uh, you know, this is a radio show to begin with, basically in its concept, and uh, I don't know why I'm doing the video, you know, and that I could just record the video and, and, and post it after the show, but when we're doing the show live, just do it completely as an audio version. And um, that was my, uh, you know, my take on it. And I decided that I said, I'm, I'm just not going to uh, broadcast this thing live anymore on video. But then I started to think about it and I said, well, you know, um, that's kind of stupid because whether I put the video up or not doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that people aren't, you know, maybe they'll go over to the audio and listen to it there, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to get any bigger audience by not doing this. And then I thought about the fact that we used to have a much larger audience when we were on Facebook, and I've thought about going back to Facebook. I do like YouTube much better in the way in which it operates and the fact that, you know, you can go to this page and just sit there and wait for it to turn itself on, uh, which I think is a, a brilliant way to that they've... they've uh, created YouTube and YouTube Live. So but then I thought about going back to Facebook. Uh, and then I thought about, it. of course, there's always the other option, just not doing the show at all. 
you know, because I, I, I do get frustrated by the whole procedure. You know, you would think after being on the air four years, audience levels would get better, not worse, you know, and um, um, I often feel depressed that I didn't do this format, at least the audio format, um, as soon as I left Sirius XM because there was an audience waiting for me. Instead, I did the TV thing, and um, that became much, even though we were sending it out live on audio, uh, that caused a big problem because we found that we had a lot of audience. We had like hundreds of people, a lot of people, almost a thousand people a day watching it live, okay? And then all of a sudden it started going down and it started going down and it started going down. I figured, you know, the show's only getting better and better. Why is it going down? And then we figured it out. And that was that the bandwidth that people were using up to watch the show uh, was too extensive for people who were like watching it on an iPad at work or on their iPhone or whatever. Because once the next month came along and they got the bill for the extra bandwidth, they went, I can't do this every day, you know, because video takes up a lot of bandwidth. So if you're watching this at home, um, you know, you've got unlimited bandwidth, right? But when you're uh, using your iPad, you don't, all right, unless you're using a Wi-Fi somewhere. So um, uh I wasted about eight months on the video thing when if I had gone directly to audio, I might have had an automatically built-in audience that would have stuck with me. As to whether they'd still be with me to this day, I, I have no idea. But um, I, um, you know, I think it would have been a it would have been a much better thing. I should have done that immediately. So, you know, you win, you lose, and whatever. But we've been doing this about four years. And I would think that the audience would grow rather than diminish. And it's, it, 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 it diminished for one reason. One reason was I, I took it off Facebook. Now, Facebook has a much larger available audience. And also, when you do the show, uh, it goes out and tells, uh, I have like 5,000 subscribers over at Facebook. And it tells all those 5,000 people, hey, Alex is on the air. And so when the show was over, we had fairly large numbers of people that watched the show every night. When we went over to YouTube, of course, I don't have the number of subscribers. We're something like uh, somewhere oh, about 625 or something now. Uh, and we keep trying to make those numbers grow. And uh, uh, I've just been working on that a lot uh, in trying to get more people. But I don't have the 5,000 base to get the information. Yeah, I know you get a little thing that says Alex Bennett's doing a show right now on YouTube because you're a YouTube subscriber and you're a subscriber to our channel. But that's only about 500 and 625 people. Uh, so, I mean, I could use a lot more subscribers, but how much can you beg and plead? You know, I, I, I put another thing up saying I need some and I got another 30 or 40, right? So, uh, you know, it, it, the, the YouTube is, a, is a, just a much better technology, okay? No question about it. But my immediate audience would be more available back at Facebook. And so I am thinking about going back, um, um, uh, about going uh, back to Facebook. I, I'm, I'm still considering that. I may start doing an afternoon show on Facebook and compare the two against each other. Not a long one, maybe an hour or something like that. And uh, it, keep checking out Facebook because, you know, I'll probably be doing it next week from the Meyer studio. It's my other studio. You'll have a different background. Um, but what is it? Forbin says that uh, Kevin Pollack chat show gets many complaints and lower numbers when he does audio-only episodes on YouTube. Well, so what? So what, Forbin? Uh, I guess because YouTube has a problem that way. Over at Facebook, I don't have the same problem. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and, you know, who cares what Kevin Pollack's doing? 
You know, uh, I care about what's happening here. Uh, it says, you, I've been watching YouTube live shows uh, for a solid uh, four years now. I haven't been doing them here. The, be oh, the better ones interact with their live stream comments and stop. Now, I'm not going to talk about the fucking chat room, okay? This show is not about the chat room. You people want to chat with your, each other. That's fine with me, Forbin. But because you won't call this show because you're too cowardly to do so, then don't just say that I've got to pay attention to your fucking chat. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I, what I should do is just, you know, it, why don't I just not do this show with callers? Why don't I just put the chat room up and we can just read the rest of the show? You know, no, this is a chat show. Okay. And, uh, if you want to be part of it, the best way to do it is to call and in case you don't know how to call, you go over to the, over to the yeah, gabnet.net and everything you need to know is there. But anyway, so I was thinking of just stopping the, uh, uh, the, uh, um, the video portion of this, or the live video, but then posting the, li the video later on, giving people maybe a reason to go look at the video, but I don't know. None of those things seemed right. None of them seemed to add up. The only thing that keeps adding up is, what the fuck am I doing this for? So, um, and call that frustration, uh, but I am, um, I'm frustrated by that. I don't want to make you feel sad. OK, but, you know, every time I come on here and I start doing a rant, it's usually about uh, the numbers I'm getting and the people who are uh, involved with it. And sometimes all of a sudden there's a spate and things go crazy. You know, I went, I looked on the, my uh, my all my YouTube stuff. OK, over the years. And I I said, let's start with the most viewed. Let's look at the most viewed. And all of a sudden I it comes up and. The most viewed is not these shows. Do you know what the most viewed video is that I have on the Alex Bennett channel? Okay. Um, a video about Ibiza now and then. It's gotten about 4,500 views. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what's number two? Um, a video I did on, so it has about 2,500 and it has, it has about more than that has like 8,000 over at, uh, over at, um, uh, what's the other thing that I use? Uh, uh, Vimeo, uh, is, uh, the video I did on, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Burning Man. Yeah. That's the second one. The third one, this really amazes me. The third one. <laughs> The third one is, are you ready for this? Oh, God, you're going to love this. My Wedding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's called Nups, and it, it is a uh, girlfriend and I going up to Lake Tahoe and getting married. And we kind of videotaped the thing. Uh, so uh, that is number three. And then short, a little bit below that, I what I do is I do these interviews with my uh, ex-wife Ronnie. <laughs> she calls it the Alex and Ronnie show, or the Ronnie and Alex show, whatever. And um, I I put it I, I run it on the show, but I put it up by itself so she can use it on her blog and website called TimeGoesBy.com. And those have gotten three or four hundred views each of them. Uh, and also the shows that I had her on before I start putting those up individually are that high. So that, that's the next highest bunch that I've got. <clears throat> so um, I sit here and go, why do I do two hours of this every night for so little satisfaction? Uh, and uh, the answer, of course, is I don't know why the fuck I do it, you know. It's insanity, you know, it's, a, it's that definition of insanity of doing the same thing over and over again, but getting the same result. But anyway, hey, listen, I want to get some stuff back here. Um, I, uh, I, today in the news, let's talk about the news a second, and it's nothing about Trump. Um, as you know, uh, Bill Cosby was found guilty, finally, in these charges down in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, about uh, in which he was 
on trial for, uh, I guess you would call, I guess it was called assault. Um, and uh, there were three charges, and the jury found him guilty on all three. Mm. Now, <clears throat> originally he had a trial, and this was, this went on about a year ago, I think, if I remember correctly. And um, it was before all of this Me Too thing happened. All right, before Harvey Weinstein and all this other stuff. But, you know, he was still looked upon with great vilification, and he went down there and was put on trial, and the jury couldn't come to a verdict. It was a hung jury. And so the state then try, decided to try him again. And they tried him again in what I would call a new atmosphere. Okay? Now, I want to say something. Before I go any further, I don't want you to think that I condone anything that this creep Bill Cosby did or has been accused of doing. I think it's terrible, okay? Um, I don't like it, and uh, I, I think it is just the worst kind of behavior and makes men everywhere look terrible, okay? Uh, and, and doesn't help the image of black men either, all right? So I don't, you know, I'm not standing up for Bill Cosby, but what I am standing up for is, how do I put this? Be there, was a, there was not an atmosphere of Me Too pro in the last trial. In this trial, there was that atmosphere. The difference between the two trials uh, w were a couple of things. Number one, the judge allowed former women who had been assaulted by um, Bill Cosby to tell their story in court. Now, whether they were telling the truth or not, we don't know. You just have to assume that they're under oath and they will tell the truth, okay? Um, in the first trial, it wasn't allowed, and the reason, it, I think only one was allowed in the first trial. And the reason why it was allowed in this trial, according to the judges, well, it shows a pattern of uh, this sort of thing and therefore makes the credibility of the current situation much more um, obvious. Uh, and so uh, this trial went in with a whole different set of rules and, I would say, social atmosphere. And therefore, I don't know that Bill Cosby had a, had a, had a, a decent chance at this point. I said, if they're retrying him now in this atmosphere, he's going to get hung because, it, you know, and if you know, three years from now he were to get tried and it was in a different atmosphere, he might not get hung. You know, that's... That, that's the trouble with the judicial system, is that justice isn't blind. Justice is a product of the times. And a lot of times people have been found guilty of things that later on in future years they would not have been found guilty of, but because at the time the prevailing uh, social uh, bearing was different. Um, uh, they turned out differently. You get what I'm trying to say here? In other words, I think that uh, he was uh, he was a, a, a somewhat a victim of the social of a social movement, and I'm saying a victim only because he was a victim of not getting what I considered an impartiality that he would have otherwise been given, absent the whole Me Too movement. Does this make sense to you? Uh, now, I'm glad. They found him guilty, okay? I think that that's, it, it, it was a long time in coming, all right? Um, but the question is, the substance of this guilt. Um, they say he can get up to 30 years in prison. Well, he's never going to make that. He's lucky if he's going to live another five years. Or if they send him to prison, if he's going to live at all, even five years. Um he is almost blind. He is, he's a man who's old, but he's older beyond his years, you know. He's only two years older than I am, and I don't think I look that old, you know. Uh, but he, um, he, you know, it, the question is, what happens to Bill Cosby? And um, I, the judge can just tell, say, well, we're not going to, we're not going to, 
make him spend any time in prison. We found him guilty, and that's enough. And I, I quite frankly feel that is enough. Uh, but these women that were down there today, they were out for blood. They were cheering. They were happy. They were delighted. And it kind of looked like a bunch of people at a hanging, kind of, you know, in the old days where they used to have a hanging and everybody would run around passing out booze and drinking and cheering each other and cheering it when the person was being strung up, usually a black person in the South. Um, and I just, I, I just found the whole atmosphere terrible. Um, and then uh, there's Gloria Allred up there, who I have a great, I have a decent amount of respect for Gloria Allred, but she does use these situations, and she's up there with these with five of these women she represents, and she's saying blah 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 blah, and everybody is making a, a day out of it, and Bill Cosby is sneaking out the back, uh, looking very dejected, very depressed, and I, I couldn't help but think to myself. Wow, what a terrible fall from grace, you know? Now, Dave Chappelle said something in his act, and I, I wish I could play it for you, but unfortunately it's copywritten, and I would probably then get a nasty note from Netflix or whatever because they paid him, you know, two, three million dollars for these specials, so they want to get their pound of flesh out of it and not give it away to somebody like uh, Alex Bennett. Um but Dave Chappelle said something in one of his specials. He said, you know, he said, let's, let's look at this Bill Cosby thing in a slightly different light. Let's look at all the things Bill Cosby has done that are good. He said, you know, he said, Bill Cosby has been a very philanthropic person. Uh, and I have, I have a list of the foundations that he uh, he gives money to, and not just, you know, 10 bucks to this one and 10 bucks to that one, but millions of dollars he has spent giving money to these, these um, organizations. The Airlift Research Foundation, the Bob Woodruff Foundation. Um, I think that both Bob Woodruff Foundation is for people in war who have been injured. Uh, the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. The Hello Friends Ennis William Crosby Foundation, the Jackie Robinson Foundation, Jumpstart, Keep a Child Alive, and the Robert F. Kennedy Memorial. That's just to name a few of those things. Now, let me read something here. It says, unlike uh, he's been a race man for decades, and he's rewarded those communal stakes with literal investment. Black colleges and prospective black college students were buoyed by his philanthropy. While his collections of black art graced important museums, even before his late career turn as black America's moral scold, because you remember he started scolding black kids for wearing their pants too low, like Phil, Cosby had spent decades leaning uh, into his popular image as a paternal figure to bolster his influence as a paternalistic one. And yet there have been notably few high-profile defenses of Cosby. Most of the statements from former Cosby Show cast members have been along the lines of Knight Pullman's respectful to the man they still call Mr. Cosby, but cautious and tepid. It did take a while for the drumbeat of accusations against Cosby to spur the black, many black institutions linked with him to start distancing themselves from him. In 2015, Spelman College the famed all-women's institute in Atlanta, whom Cosby and his wife Camille donated, are you ready for this, folks? Donated $20 million in the 1980s. Quietly did away with the endowed professorship that bore his name. Central State University, a black school in southwest Ohio with whom Cosby had bestowed millions, removed his name from the building that housed its school of communications and other institutions have made similar calls uh, and for universities and colleges without large endowments, these are tough decisions to make. But the fact that these moves were met with little uproar is telling of just how much Cosby's power and influence has waned. That's why it's worth noting how much the very real political position of Cosby himself occupied. The kindly cultural ambassador, ambassador of negritude has become, if not entirely outmoded, at least viewed far more skeptically. Yet here is a guy donated $20 million to a black college. Come on. 
Uh, in fact, was it a black women's college? Wait a minute, hold on a second. I have to go back to it again. Um, a, um, yeah, a, a famed all women's institution in Atlanta that Cosby and his wife endowed. So, you know, um, what um, um, the comedian was saying, James Chappelle, he said at the end of his little rant and so forth that uh, uh, he he felt uh, he felt that we ought to all look at, uh, at Cosby as a case of well you got to take the bad with the good. In other words, yes, he's done terrible stuff in that part of his life, but the rest of his life was exemplary. I mean, in television, he had a TV show that was number one in all of television at a time when blacks didn't have TV shows, okay? He, he started Fat Albert as an educational product for young black people, all right? So this guy um, uh, is, is, a, is a man to be admired. Uh, and yet, when something like this happens, we tend to throw out everything that is to be admired and don't pay attention to that. It means nothing, all right? And um, uh, the fact is that we, you know, these colleges shouldn't deny that he supported them. They shouldn't deny his philanthropy towards them because this part of his life is a different part of his life than what made him a philanthropist. This was a if you want to call it a weakness, it was a bad part of his, of his life. Um, it was perhaps something that when he was younger, you know, uh, a lot of guys gave women drugs to get them high enough so they'll fuck them. Uh, I never did that. I, ne I thought that was a terrible thing to do, but I, the guys did it, and it wasn't looked down upon. Uh, Bill Cosby, if anything, is the biggest victim of socialization, of the social mores changing and him being swept up in the middle of it. Um, what he did was terrible. Uh, what these women have said he did was untoward. Any, nobody should do what he did. Um, but still, do we do away with the man's works? You know, I, 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 somebody mentioned today that the networks who have been carrying the Cosby show, the, the cable networks who have been carrying the Cosby show, are now no longer going to carry the Cosby shows. Well, why? That was his work at a time when he was doing fine work, and it was great work, and it was important work. And is it any less funny? Is it any less invigorating? Is it any less important now than it was then? And do we deny the man's art? You know, I was, I'm watching a thing on Picasso. Picasso was a terrible guy. He was a terrible guy towards women. Uh, he, was a, he was a real rake, you know. And yet, do we say Picasso's art should be taken down from museums because of the kind of human being he was? You know, no. I just, I don't know. I, I, I just was very bothered by not the verdict, but the way it, it the atmosphere in which it came down. OK, and that it was a lot of women getting even with a lot of guys, which which brings me to my next point. And, and this is going to drive somebody like Amy nuts. OK, um, she has a show here on this. Well, her, her friend has a show and she is a permanent guest on it um, at the midnight. Um, she probably come down to me for saying this, you know. But I'm really afraid for men. You know, men are good. We're a little stupid. We're a little dumb. We're a little goofy. Sometimes get led around by our penis. That's, that's one of our biggest problems, you know. Um, but most guys are okay. You know, they're good people. And yet I feel that we're, we're literally being attacked now. You know, and, and I hear stuff coming out of women that if I were to say it about men, about women, uh, things they're saying about men, if I were to say them about women, I would be considered the worst sexist in the world. I mean, the kind of tripe I hear from somebody like, like uh, 
um, um, Amy on, on Jack's show. You know, I mean, it's sexist. It's just pure, utter sexism. And yet, because women uh, are doing it against men, it's okay. It's all right. And no, it's not. It is just as bad as, as when men do it about women. And uh, I always had a great deal of respect for women. I, I don't think I could ever be accused. I mean, unless there's some nutcase out there who imagines something. You have no accounting for that. Um, but I don't think I've ever done anything that would ever be considered untoward or anything approaching rape or forceful sex or whatever, you know, mainly because I, I was so afraid of rejection. It took me a long time to even come on to somebody. But anyway, the point that I'm making is that, that I'm just afraid that guys are now very subject to this sort of stuff. Now, today it was announced there's a rumor running around that Charlie Rose is going to have a show. And the show is going to have on as its guests guys who have lost work because of being accused. I think it would be fascinating and interesting because you get somebody like Louis C.K. and you really, you know, if I think about it, I got to defend Louis C.K. I don't, I don't think there was anything really terrible there, okay? There were some misjudgments, but there, but he got caught in the very beginning of this Me Too thing, and if you were in the very beginning of that, you didn't get away with it. If you were later on in it, you could kind of finesse it. You know, People didn't automatically think you were guilty. But he, he wants to do a show about this, or they say he's going to do a show about this, and people are complaining, how dare he have a show on there? To, but, you know... It'd be interesting to see these pe these guys come in and explain, you know, their side of the story because, you know, Louis C.K.'s side of the story has never been told. Uh, and I, I don't think we'd have to worry about seeing Weinstein because uh, I don't think he's got a story to tell. I think that uh, Weinstein is probably as guilty as anybody could possibly be. Um you know, but there are several of these people that were on the cusp of all of that. And, and what they did was, yeah, they, they had some misjudgments 20 years ago, which now they don't even engage in any longer. And they're being called to account for it. And it reminds me of the, the communist purge back in the 50s, where somebody was a communist 20 years earlier because he thought it was not, wasn't a bad idea. It was a hip thing to do. Or he knew a woman who was a communist and he wanted to get laid or whatever. Uh, 20 years later is being accused of something he did 20 years earlier uh, as, a, as a youthful folly. So I just, I just think that, uh, you know, what I saw today at, after it was over with was more kind of like a lynching party. Uh, these women kind of rejoicing and, oh, we got them, we got them. You know, no, you've you, you got to realize it's not a happy day. It's a sad day. It's a sad day for a career that was important, for a guy who helped his community a lot. But it was a sad day that he had to fall from grace. And not that he shouldn't have fallen from grace. Not that it wasn't important that he fall from grace, okay? But the difference there was that uh, that fall from grace should not be celebrated. It should, we should just say it's a very sad day that it had to come to this and not feel sorry for Bill Cosby. God knows there's no sympathy that I have here for Cosby. But I do have a sympathy for all the people who turn this into a lynching and don't just say, we got the guy, we're satisfied, let's go home now and, and be able to sleep better at night. But no, they couldn't do that. They had to hold a press conference and yada, 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 and we got the guy and this thing. Blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, there's Cosby sneaking out the back door. And the only, the only thing that Cosby did that I really appreciate in this whole thing is when they finally were discussing whether he should be allowed to go home or not, and he's going to go home till there's a, there are hearings and so on and so forth. It's about three months. Uh, the, the attorney, district attorney, said we shouldn't let him off on bail uh, because he's a flight risk, uh, because he owns an airplane and he could take off at any time. And Cosby stood up 
It's the only thing Cosby said in court. And looked at the guy and went, I don't own a fucking airplane, you asshole. Now, what was great about this was, this is a quote now in court, right? A, a, a quote from Cosby. The only thing he said. And so on television, all these people are reporting it, and they're using the word a-hole. A dot dot hole. Come on. Become adults. You, asshole isn't one of those terrible terms you can't use. And one of the people did use the term. And I said, good for you. I'm glad you used it. I think it was over on CNN they used asshole. Anyway, so uh, uh, there's just one more thing about inappropriate sexual behavior. And this involves my old friend Stan Lee. He's been hit with a lawsuit filed Monday accusing him of inappropriate behavior during two massages in, in 2017. That's last year. The suit was filed by a Chicago masseuse. Maria Caballo filed the lawsuit Monday seeking more than $50,000 in punitive damages and attorney fees from the 95-year-old writer and artist. Let me repeat that. The 95-year-old artist and writer. This means that when he was accused of this stuff, he was 94, okay? The Chicago reports that Lee's attorney, Jonathan Freund, uh, called the lawsuit a shakedown and says Lee denies the allegations. Chicago police are reportedly investigating after Carballo also filed a complaint with them. According to the complaint, Lee fondled himself during the first massage and moaned so much during the second that Carballo stopped the treatment. Since when is moaning inappropriate behavior, especially when you're getting massaged? I mean, if I'm getting massaged, I want to go, ooh, ow, ooh, oh, yeah, wow, ooh, you know, because it's making me feel good. And if it has a happy ending, as some massages do, you know. Uh, anyway, Lee stood up angrily and demanded Carballo keep massaging him. So that's the latest in the let's go after somebody of inappropriate behavior a, a, let me move, take my shirt out. It's looking terrible. Um, anyway, that's the that's the whole thing. Let me. Oh, where are we? Let's uh, let's go turn the phones on here and see if anybody's going to call tonight. Tonight is a, a feel free night, which uh, uh, is is a good thing at times uh, because uh, I call it get a word in edgewise night, and it'd be nice if you uh, if you. Uh, if you were to call and prove that we get a nice call, an amount of callers, even when Phil isn't here, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so the lines are now open, and uh, we're waiting for someone to start off the whole thing. Um, I, I talk, why well, I talk? I, I, I start off saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk for a half hour. That's the first thing in my mind. No, it's not going to, you know, for, for, first, uh, in the first hour, am I going to be able to talk? And then all of a sudden, I find that I've gone 40 minutes talking. So anyway, uh, uh, I know that Renee's out there. She probably disagrees with all that I've just said. I'm just saying it's not a day to celebrate, okay? Um, and uh, it's a day to feel sad that a life has come to this, you know. Uh, here, here's Renee, and she'll probably take me to the woodshed on this one, you know. Hi. Oh, crap. Huh? There she oh, is. Oh, there it is. She, Much better. Yeah, she's the <laughs> elephant in the room. <laughs> and now, here comes uh, Jeff. Uh, he's uh, calling in. Uh, hello, Renee. Hi, I've got you on too many times. You got me on too many times? What do you mean? Uh, too many places. I'll call you right back. <laughs> oh really? Hello. She was double talking. Huh? She was double talking. I didn't hear her double talking. Yeah, I did. You did? I didn't. No. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, yeah. how you doing, Jeff? Good. What do you think good. about the Cosby thing? Oh, I'm I'm uh, not as enthusiastic as you are. What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean enthusiastic? I I, I, I don't know that I'm enthusiastic. 
Well, you kind of like giving him a pass. No, I'm not giving him a pass. That wasn't what I was. I, and I said in the beginning that I didn't want people to think that. What I was doing was I was trying to put it in perspective. Uh, and it's not. It's perspective from your point of view. Well, yes, yeah, of course, my from point. A, okay, so let's let's get this straight. First off, you bitched about Louis C.K. and all of the rest of them that didn't get their day in court, that were tried in in the public, and that they were found to be guilty, and they lost their jobs, and it's mm -hmm. so awful, yada yada yada. Bill Cosby gets taken to court multiple times. He gets tried in court. Yeah, no. It comes back that he's guilty. Yes. And what are you still doing? What am you I? You are still giving him a pass. I'm not giving him a pass. You're giving him a pass. No, no, Renee. I'm not I giving. Him, I I pass. said in the very beginning that I wasn't giving him a pass. That this was a terrible behavior on a human being's part towards other human beings, and that I found it despicable, and and always did. But what I what bothers me is the social atmosphere which created the difference between the previous trial and this trial, and social atmosphere should have nothing to do with it. He should have been just as guilty a year ago as he is today. So, but he, but, so one could say that the atmosphere before this trial was not quite pro-woman or not quite on a level basis and therefore he was released and wasn't charged but now they brought him back up on the same same charges and because of we have more say he gets tried in court multiple times and you yeah. come back and still say the same thing poor man poor man no I, no, no you're you're, you're no uh, so i will bad. not allow that renee because what you're doing is you're misquoting me you're misquoting yeah. you i never said poor man you said I said, I'll tell thing. you what is you what is this. what is sad. What is sad is that a man's life turned to this. You know that that because of this uh, this uh, dual life, so to speak, that he was living, that his life and his good work should come to this. You know. But he had choices. He had a choice. I know. Not to I'm not saying that. Man. I'm just saying that it. So it's, when you say you need to weigh hey, out hey, the difference, Greek, tra Greek tragedies were always about uh, about uh, 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 people in a high position uh, losing that high position because of terrible things they did. You know, and and this is a Greek tragedy. So four thousand years information education. Well, I, you know, I, I, quite frankly, in many ways, I think you're a sexist, and that's why you take the position no, you do. I'm just tired. Of, you know what? Women have been shit on for so long, and oh, now that we've oh God. got uh, 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 Wait a minute. Rene Renati, Ray Renati has just joined us, and he just went, oh, God. Yes, Ray. Oh, I just hear this all the time, Rene. I get so sick of it. It's okay, go. I mean, no, it's like, it, it's like it's the thing that we're supposed to all believe, and then I even know men my age who who are who self chast who chastise themselves to make the women around them happy so that they're more accepted by the women who want to make sure that the whole victimhood sort of like outlook on life is the one that everyone buys into. And I'm so tired of it because everybody has their struggles in life, men, women, no matter what color you are, no matter what age you are. It's just a bunch of crap. I Sorry. mean, I, I think I'm, tired of, I, I, I'm just tired of it. I think the most uh, the most horrible thing is what I what we could call gender entrapment. And that goes for both men and women that we've had roles yeah. to live out. And uh, uh, quite frankly, I never like to have to live out the role that I've had to live out as a male about, you know, bringing home the bacon and doing all of that. And that makes you a male. And, you know, the pressures that that in, that entails uh, but, but, you know, but, but, but I mean, I, I see, think you that you can't say that past like 1960 uh, because uh, both men and women were thrown into the workforce at that particular point in time. So you're giving me shit from well, that caused what, a whole different years ago, that, that, 60 years ago. That, uh, you, hey, by the way, will you look at the picture we're looking at? Is that the moon behind you, Ray? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the moon's following me. By the way, <laughs> you're, are you through? You're through with the play now. How'd it go? No, I have one more. Uh, we have we have this weekend. That's it. Oh, good. We have yeah yeah. yeah. It's going great. Yeah. So yeah, it's going great. Well, we heard you were really good in it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> 
I, I don't mean to be, I didn't mean to be such, such a prick right then. I just, I, I have yeah. to hear this. Like, I think part of the problem is in San Francisco that the whole, the, the whole Me Too thing and the whole, like, people of privilege have to, you know, whip themselves type of attitude is just so rampant. I get tired of it because I'm one of those people that that gets pasted onto just because I'm a 50 something white male. I mean, and, yeah, but, but and, it, 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 so you know, unfair. Renee, you can't deny that many men recently have lost their livelihoods as a result of innuendo and 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 no, statements that were made. That the statements, wait a minute, no, no, career. no, statements made Forget by it. by people no, that were unverified, been, that were unverified. That was done. like you're a McCarthyite. You're a McCarthyite. No, you're 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 you're, you're like the House on American Activities subcommittee who accused people. That's what he says. That's what that's what Donald Trump said. If a woman is getting harassed at her job, she should quit. Not go to HR. Not help get the guy. Hey, training, you're, not, now you're doing what about is am I, I? That's a wrong theory on the part. Of, that's a wrong theory on the part of Donald Trump. They shouldn't do that. They should be able to go to HR, and HR should be able to sort out the problem. So you know what the big deal about all this at the moment is, and we're not talking about it. The and so Ray, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And, and Sorry, it's fine. The way, when people talk about being racist, I don't ever. <sighs> Uh, take it in into myself because I'm not usually racist. So when and Ray, you and, and most of you men on the show you have to remember that they're not talking about you. Okay. They're not talking about men like you. They're talking about a whole nother breed of men of a man who would drip that would that would drug multiple women. And, how, and rape them. That's not any of you. So when all of these women are coming up or you're hearing it, you can just say point blank, I, I don't fall into that okay. category. Well, well, okay, tell me, tell me something quickly. What is there, uh, I, I, many times when I was uh, younger, uh, I would not uh, give women drugs without them knowing that they were taking the drugs. And in fact, they would, ask, they would ask for them, okay? Uh, and many times uh, they would ask, do you have any quaaludes? Now, if I give them a quaalude, because I know once I give them the quaalude, it's a slam dunk. Okay, uh, uh, would that be wrong of me? Would that be would that be wrong of me? Can you explain the? De can you define the definition of slam dunk? Well, I'm saying a slam dunk that you're going to get laid. Wait, it, it, that she's going to be awake enough to get laid. No, well, the quaaludes quaaludes didn't make you pass out. Quaaludes made you horny. Among other things, they made you. They could make you pass out. They could be used as a sleeping pill. The great thing about quaaludes. Let me explain something to you, so you know okay. what quaaludes. Got to explain do. a drug to the, me. You know, the great thing about about uh, quaaludes were that as a sleeping pill, uh, you could take them, and if you wanted to go to sleep, you'd go right to sleep. If you then wanted to get up and walk around and get do stuff and get stuff done, you could do that too. It was a hypnotic. It wasn't a. Uh, a, 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 a how can we call it a, a, a tranquilizer? A tranquilizer. So. Yeah. Okay. And so, that's what he's accused of using, by the way. Not, and how many times is he accused of using that? Oh well, endless numbers of times. And I'm sure, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's guilty of it. You know, except in Janice. There were 60, except in Janice Dickinson's women. case. Okay. Okay, so hold on. You know what we're not talking about, and we ought to be talking about because this is what Ray and. Alex, but Alex has been dragging us through it. The guy, I'm sorry, I heard it on today. The guy who drove the truck into the peop, the van into the people in Toronto. He often visits websites that actually talk about what you gentlemen were just talking about. There's a whole group of men, and I'm tr I'm looking for the website now. I can't remember what it's called. There's a whole group of men out there that feel that all of this is, is it, that it, okay, there's, so I should rephrase what I just said because I'm about to say something bad. There's a group of men out there that feel like you guys. However, they're not you guys. These, there's a group of men out on the, out on the web talking about how hard it is to be a man, how difficult it is to get all of these things that you have to do and that you're expected to do and you shouldn't have to be expected to do. They're out there. But the guy who drove the 
van into the pedestrians in Toronto is a uh, uh, works Wait a minute, she men is, yeah. that believe that but they also believe the fact that they own the women's body and they have the right to the women and that the women are there to service them. Well, then they're not <laughs> like us. Well, that's why I separated it. Well, I then, well, yeah, but you said they're kind of like you. Well, they're like you because of their, you, it's a Bill Cosby thing. They, you know, oh, the difference God. between drugging somebody and not drugging somebody. They, and they know the difference and they don't know the difference. So it's the same thing. It's just there wow. are men out there like you that are just being pushed to the limit. And it, it's very difficult. And now there's groups so that they can talk about mm -hmm. these things. And you don't have to well, be wait alone a minute. about what, this, uh, But right? how are they being pushed to the limit? By the women? No. What's us again? Not because they have to have a career. Oh, not because they have to bring home money. It's because of the women. Oh, my God. That was an eye roll. <sighs> picking it's not our fault we didn't create the rules we didn't say the men are the only ones that have to go out and earn a living and then as of world war ii we were all forced out into americans were forced out into the job track and both men and women suffered because they lowered the wages for all of them because it was easier to pick a new person than it was to pay them something <sighs> Ray, am I wrong? I'm not going to even try to have a discussion with you about this, Ray. It's okay. You know uh, what? Because your, your, your train of thought is completely off, and you don't see it, and, I, and I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise because it would be like trying to convince my wife or women friends that I know that think the same way, and they don't even understand what I'm saying. So I'm but, done. I'm not going to say anything. But we don't think you're one of those men. We don't but, think that you're standing in our way. Okay. Why do you think that we are talking at you like that? Because you just huh? said that they're just like you, but they went a little further. And it's, no, it, it's a completely different thing. No, there, there are a group of men out there that feel the same way you do about that. And then, then there's the freaks out there that do exactly like driving vans into pedestrians. But there are uh, men oh, with the same I, I, okay. I don't think I, 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 I am insulted by even being lumped in with those people. And we're insulted yeah, by too. saying a guy who goes to trial gets, gets slammed with the verdict and you turn around and say... Oh, yeah, is, yeah. I think, I think Bill we, Cosby... We, we I, I, I said Bill Cosby was a wonderful person. No, well, you obviously, you weren't fucking listening to me system. because I, I and I, I made that I made that uh, that uh, uh, exception. I made that, that that statement about now before I start this. Remember how I feel. This man is disgusting. OK. And I made a, a point of that. And yet uh, you somehow come back in and you're saying, hey, you know, no, you're in your 30 minute rant. Or what was it? 30 minutes. You did towards the end of that. You was what it, you it was, said was that it should be taken into consideration all of the good choices that he made. No, no, I no, I as a matter of fact, I was I, I was uh, quoting Dave Chappelle, who, if you Go watch ahead. his special on Netflix, does a whole piece about Bill Cosby and about mm -hmm. all, what he said. All the great things Bill Cosby did for the black community and for the community in general, and that we should not forget those, even though he turned out to be a creep. He said, it, you've got to remember that all the, the, the good that Bill Cosby did and, and, and the thing that produced the good that he did was the same thing that produced this horrible person at the same time. And that you have to figure that sometimes you get both, okay? Uh, and 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 we should not forget though what Bill Cosby did for blacks in America and what he did for just America in general. And I have to agree with him on that. And we shouldn't forget the fact that he drugged us and raped us. Uh, yeah, but that's and he was convicted. That's of his. That's the way the story ends. But you know, I mean, uh, uh, Wagner was a anti-Semitic, but I still think he wrote some great music. Okay, and I'm not going to negate his music because he was a uh, an anti-Semitic. Okay, I mean I'm still going to say what he did, he did well. You know, he did good. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Alex. You've been, been you've been listening to this. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, I have. What What are your thoughts? 
Well, you know, it's like I wrote in a post today. I went, Cosby, wow. And that, that was all I said. And, yeah. you know, a couple of my friends chimed in. And, I, and the main thing, I guess my thoughts were, I grew up with the guy. Same thoughts that you had. I, you know, He was a comedian that I grew up with. I loved it. You know, I loved him when I grew up. Hang on a my damn clock is going off and it makes all kinds of noise. Uh, <clears throat> I grew up with the guy, loved him. I bought his albums. We used to sit in the street and listen to him. Yeah. You know, hey, yeah. hey, hey, Fat Albert, the whole thing. Hey, hey, hey. And <laughs> loved it. But you know what? I, I was pissed off as hell today when, when he was brought to trial and was found guilty. And, you know, the shit that he did was wrong. And I thought, you know, you know what, dude, you screwed up. Yeah. You yeah. plain screwed up. And, but, you know, the fact that should I chastise him? I don't think it was right for them to, you know, do the public lynching thing. But just let him go away. That's that's the way I look at it is let him go away. Breathe. He screwed up. He did what he's doing. Let him go away. Let him fade away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I don't think he should have been publicly lynched. Let it, let those people say what they say. They did, you know. She did get you know screwed literally, uh, but you know it wasn't. I don't think it was really. I don't know. I, I got to pick. It's up called here. rape. Go ahead. Okay. It's uh, called rape. Uh, yeah, Je yeah. Jeff I mean, Jeff has his hand. It's up. called rape. Jeff <clears throat> has his hand up. Yeah, I mean, I look at it. That if if it wasn't him who did the same exact uh, rape frequency of rape and, and that the last time it's been proved in in law that that he's done it at least this time he he has to go at least to some kind of a prison or or some kind of Response response has to happen to him. I have a prediction. Now, if just because yeah. he's got seventy eight billion dollars that he gave to some college, it's not a pass. Thank it's you. not a pass, but you that, have to add that, that in. You that, ha, you in fairness, you have to add that into the legacy because that's part of who the man was. There was well, a very well, you there, can write. That's for there was a, there was a very that's for a philosophical book. You can write all about him, about the yeah. plus and minus to him. But but we're talking about today. It's time for the guy to go to prison. Well, I don't think it's, he's. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I don't think. What he, he did I, to that woman. I don't think he's ever going to wind up in prison. Well, that may not be exactly prison. I don't know what. Be. You know, I, I whatever I, it's. I think, I think, the, I think there'll, be a, a, there'll be enough lawyering going on for five or six years that he'll be dead before, you know, uh, before. If this has, doesn't kill him, uh, uh, he'll, he'll be dead within four to five years. He'll never wind up going to prison. So well, they said they were going to. They said they were going to appeal it. So all that crap is going to probably. He'll be dead before he. That's what know, I gets, said. Get yeah. all get through court. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, uh, Ray. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more on the side of Renee on this. I mean, if everything that he's accused of doing is true, I think it's absolutely disgusting. If he actually raped 60-plus women, like they say, I, was this trial just for one woman? Uh, I don't know. Uh, this was, yeah, uh, this was for one woman. But if he really did all of that, uh, that I mean, if that was just some guy on the street He'd be, you know, locked away forever, and no, everyone would hate him, and you wouldn't. I, I, right now, I have no respect for him whatsoever. It reminds me right. of OJ. I, I grew up worshiping OJ and Bill Cosby, and yeah. why, when OJ, why do you make when those? I found out OJ killed two people, which I'm sure he did. Um, yeah. I, I don't care how much I worship the guy; he's an asshole. He's a total asshole, and it erases all of that in my mind. And I agree with, with that. Bill Cosby. I mean, I it it's disgusting. It's what? absolutely disgusting and sick. Yeah. And you know, I guess the first four, the first few times, maybe he felt guilty. 
but then it just got so easy, he kept doing it, maybe. I don't know. But whatever, it's it's beyond me. And I don't want to have anything to do with the person. Think about him. Disappear. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, no, I mean. I mean, if he has some sort of mental illness, well, that's sad. But that's all. I'm just saying that it's, you know, it is, it is, it's like a Greek tragedy, you know, in which. Yeah, it is. You it know, is, in uh, a way, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and. I mean, you could write, you could write a great Greek tragedy about this. I mean, right now, my emotions are just, just complete disgust and disdain. I, I, I. I yeah, that's all. Well, I, I, you know, I felt mad, and part of my, I was mad at him too. You know, I was mad that yeah. that, that 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 he did this to a public who really truly cared about him. I mean, he was beloved. Yes. He wasn't just liked; he was beloved. And, right there, yeah. And I think a lot of people feel it, it, the emotions will go to mine or they will go to Renee's, and a lot of those are based on the fact that this was a guy we loved at one point. That was uh, uh, somebody we looked up to. Yes, pa uh, yes, yeah. Jeff. I, I want to say that even though Renee and maybe myself have a different opinion of, of you, I think we both at one time in our lives, we thought a lot about that guy. Yeah. He was yeah. funny. He was entertaining. He was a little bit different. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. he was a, a person that really positively affected a lot of life for a lot of, I'll say, young people and then older people. Uh, and he was terrific. But then he started raping women. And well, he had been doing this behavior. Or now you he, you kind of lose, what I call it, now you lost your, your, your past ticket. Well, I mean, he... Well, he, he, he think about it, I was, they were, if, you, if I look at it the way I was looking at it, when I was a kid, he was doing that shit. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. oh you did not say that. Yeah, no, yeah, he wasn't. Was he, was, he, was, he, was he was doing this all the way back when. Yes, Ray had his hand up. Yeah, so we, uh, you know yeah, what's yeah. interesting? Have you ever watched him on any of the, uh, like, on the old Carson shows? and stuff? Yeah. He would joke, sort of, about this type of behavior. Yes. And everyone thought he was just kidding around. Yeah. And, but he was telling the truth. He was telling yeah. the truth. He was actually talking about what he did. And, exactly. And, uh... uh you can go back. I've seen the. I've gone back and watched them. It's just, and we all thought, oh, he's just joking around. It's funny. Carson thought. Yeah, he, was he wouldn't around. do that. He wouldn't do that. But he was actually doing it, <laughs> and he was telling okay. everyone. That's it's sick. So, I just it did is the sick. Back. And you know why he could That's... work it into his act? Because that was the, you know, that was the zeitgeist. That was the tempo of the times, uh, yeah. and, and and that right. kind of humor. You do it, and everybody goes, ha 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 ha. You know, well, today yeah. we wouldn't After laugh at that. Okay. Today we wouldn't laugh I, at that, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember that was, that was the end thing in the 70s, I know. But because of all the, the drugs and partying and everything. Yeah. But still, he was doing it. <laughs> well, uh, what, what was it? Uh, I, was watching, I was watching an episode of, uh, of uh, Two and a Half Men. And I started listening to the humor in it. And I suddenly realized that this was humor... Which today, th those shows are already out of date because you can't make fun. He, he was always saying, "I got to tap that woman," or "I can, I'm going to go do that woman over there," or you know, uh, "Here, I'll show you how you do it." And uh, boy, it's a lot of wind noise now coming from where you are, Ray. Oh, sorry. Let me. Let me. Uh, it's me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, n now you turn your camera the wrong way, and we don't have the widescreen oh. on you. There we go. Good. Um, I got a question for Renee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think there should be a referendum on how long the statute of limitations should be that people could vote on and choose maybe extending them more, longer than they are. And I think only women should be allowed to vote as far okay. as rapes of females. So the, there's a couple problems with that because the fucking men, and like Phil, each state gets to choose. Each state gets to choose how long any criminal action is allowed to be. Well, in California, in California, they extended. Right, 
but California has one of the better laws. No, in fact, it, some, it, it, it never runs out now. Right. The, the only things that never like run out, the Minnesota. only two crimes, the only two crimes that never run out now in California are rape and murder. But they're, it's not across the United States. So when you ask a question like that, you're asking basically a question for three states. So I don't right. know if the, the other 47 are just. Well, I'm, I'm kind of against it. I think there should be a, a cutoff date. It probably shouldn't be as little as it is now, was and shouldn't be as much as it is. I don't think that you can say that somebody can go back 40, 45 years and accuse somebody of rape because then all the possibilities of, uh, of, of people who could clear you or whatever, I mean, half the people are dead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it. <laughs> Sorry, he's wiping his butt. Oh, the dog, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the only answer is for everybody to wear body cams. They're pretty cheap. Well, yeah, I'll tell well, you something. If, if I were a, in a dating world now and still working in radio on the air somewhere, yeah, uh, yeah. I would be very careful about when I dated somebody. I, I would, I'd probably get a lawyer and make them sign stuff before I even went out with them, you know? Ray, are you over at Middlefield? In Palo Alto? Yeah. Are you in Middlefield no, in Palo Alto? Ray. Or middle... What's your dog part? Wait, wait, turn on your microphone. Your microphone isn't on. Muted. Ray. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't ask him a question when he's muted. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a nice park. It, what? All of a sudden, it's really dark. He's what, gone him? dark. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> turn on your microphone. Turn on your mic. Uh, Ray. I don't. You know what, Alex? The thing is, I think is, it's on now. Oh, it's on okay, now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is it on? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you at the park in okay, Middlefield? Are you? Go ahead. Closer to downtown. Yeah. Oh, middle field. Yep, I know exactly where you are. <laughs> we used to hang there too. <laughs> cool. Has yeah, it's the, a great Has the dog. dog taken a dump already? I, I don't think so. I got my bag here. I saw her wiping her butt there, but uh, yeah. I don't it's think cool. she has. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you guys, there, there's psychologists today, or psychology today does talk about men's feelings about what's happening in the new era of women and then how they feel about all the pressures that come up against them that they've had all of this time that now women are just getting to the point where we're being being required to share those responsibilities as well and so a lot of people do talk about this i think it's yeah. important discussion to have but i probably am not the best person to talk about men's oppression or if we're and and is it countrywide? Meaning, are we? Is it just a United States thing, or is this a feeling that's going across the planet? Hmm. Uh, uh, I believe that the uh, Me Too thing is pretty much uh, worldwide, less probably in some countries than others, because in some. Why do you well, sign the two together? Well, what? Why is the Me Too? Why are you attaching I'm the two? Why are you saying Me Too and? Why are, why are they the same thing? Well, I'm thing? saying because here we have various movements going on that are exacerbating our movement forward, okay? And uh, the question is, do these same similar social things go on in other countries? And I'm going to have to say in some countries, less than others. And the reason being that in some countries, uh, th th these were already a given, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't think you go to Sweden, Denmark or whatever and and really find the same level of sexism in those countries that you find in the United States. On the other hand, you may find considerably more sexism in, say, France. You yes, know, in there's Italy. much more in France. I can tell you that yeah. for sure. And Italy. So the nature of and then you have to add to that the women uh, and how many of them are have banded together to do something about this. You know, um, but you do agree that we had to band together to get this done. Well, uh, get, everybody has to, to band get together. Bill Cosby to, on trial. No, I don't think you had to band together. I think the people in in uh, Pennsylvania had to, you know, get, the uh, district attorney had to get together and decide to charge him with it. You know, this the the women's movement had nothing to do with Bill Cosby being charged. Uh, it had to be okay. with the with the perseverance of the women the the one aggrieved woman 
who oh. kept pushing it and and oh. charging oh, him. And could... she and she was the only one they could charge. They could charge him because the statute of limitations had run out on all the rest. Okay, this was the one they could get him on. Uh, right. And, so then, in this case, because there's so many of them, don't you think a statute of limitations is ridiculous? Well, I, yes, I do, because we got him anyway, didn't we? Yeah, that took what 10, 20, 10, 15 years. Well, it, 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 back thank you. Boy, but, that was all I had to do in my entire life back, was to get back my then. Fist back into then, jail. a lot of women. How many of these women at the time actually went to the police and even complained because they were afraid of reprisals or because they felt that Cosby was so powerful that they couldn't fight that kind of uh, power. You know the 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 women's the gymnastics trial that went on. One hundred and fifty six women yep. testified against him. So not one of those women women were believed. I think by, only by only, the, only a handful of those actually testified against him. That was all that was needed. But they were there were those that when the when the trial was concluded and he was found guilty were allowed to to speak to him, and that no, but amounted to how many of them went to the police station? I. I don't know that it was a hundred. Multiple went to multiple, the multiple, but not the hundred and fifty. Not the entire amount, no. But many of them did, and they were all said the same thing: "Go away, you're a stupid little woman. You don't know anything. The doctor knows more than you." Well, do you know that that's what they said to him? Yeah. No, you do. Actually, oh, oh, did, you, did you read? Did you read the remarks of the the police, the guy who was in charge of the police department at the mm, time? No. He was very, very sorry that he didn't believe all those women that came in. He was very, very sorry that he well, didn't. Well, no, he he's, 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 he's an asshole because he's an asshole because if one woman comes in, maybe you can have your doubts. If two come in, you could say they were in collusion. When you got five coming in, you got to start thinking, hey, maybe we should send somebody out to his place to check on this. You know, I mean, you, how how many people have to come forward before you suddenly decide to do something about it? You know. Well, but see, you keep saying it's a it's a given if a woman opens and you're her saying, mouth and you're says saying, she's you're, raped, uh, you're saying, you're saying, everybody's going to stop and say we're going to court. You're, you're saying it's, it's you're saying it's a guy thing, and I don't think it's a guy thing. I think it I think it's a police thing. I think it it's uh, they were the victim of of a lot of other things uh, before that. You know. Uh, and, and also, they were kids too. You know, kids don't get believed that much no, when they come forward. No, some of them were some of them were underage. Some of them were not. No, but and some of them were guys that were not underage. There was a guy in that that was not underage. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that there were all kinds of reasons before the fact that he was a guy that they got dismissed. You know, the police have a tendency to dismiss things and uh, of those nature. They they always dismissed, uh, uh, you know, women who were being beaten by their husbands, you know, uh, because uh, uh, of what it takes to prove that sort of thing. You do realize that that still happens frequently in Mississippi, uh, of course, of Alabama, co of, of course, of course, of course, of course. And there are there, by the way, there are wives who beat their husbands and the husbands are too embarrassed to ever turn them in. That's true. Yeah. So let's remember right. that. Right. But it, it's like, you know, it's a far smaller amount. I but don't, I don't know that it's as small as you think it is, Renee, or you'd no, like to believe true. it is. Yeah. 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 It's not like you guys have ever no, really I'm just, had you know, I just think that guys on the whole are, you know, I hear very sexist remarks about guys. And their remarks to the extent of, oh, they're, they're st silly or they're stupid or they're goofy or they're whatever. And we're portrayed by women in a certain light. And I don't like that any more oh, than I yeah, like guys. Yeah. Boy, uh, if I was blonde, no, that would really suck. I don't like guys. I don't like guys who, who <laughs> no, who portray women in a certain light because, <laughs> because they're women. You know, I don't, I don't like guys who, who, who portray blondes as being dumb, just like you okay, were just. Well, let me get my, my, my triples up there and, and, and then you can have a discussion with in them. In fact, the only, you know, so the, the only blondes that I've ever known are pretty damn, were pretty damn smart. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone out with them, you know. It, it doesn't. So each side has the ability and has in the past used very bad judgment while listening to other people's feelings about things that have happened that they might have been a victim. And whether it's a police officer that isn't listening or whether it's a court system or whether it was me not listening to Ray correctly, then it's still wrong. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a big wee-wee-wee for you because you're, you're talking about the way the cops treat women. How about the way they treat blacks? 
I mean, come on, everybody's – there's there are a lot of groups that have been oppressed by cops, okay? And it has nothing to do with gender. Did you not see the poor woman in – the fast food store that the cops wrestled to her to the ground and her top was completely off by the time of it and they still kept filming her and they put it on YouTube? No. But she was just eating her food. No, but so I don't I don't go I don't go online woman. looking oh, I don't go online looking for those things. Did you see it, Tim? Did you see that video? Tim? Did you didn't no, see the no, cop I did not. See it, if Tim it. didn't see it then it doesn't exist. <laughs> I see what I want to yeah. see. By the way, that's a beautiful moon out there in California. You know, it's a moon. Yeah. It's a moon you're going to see soon, uh, uh, Renee, out there in Hawaii. That's right. Yeah. It's so. the sovereign nation of California. Sovereign nation. You know, I of think. California. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all. Um, I think we're all manipulated a little bit by the media, and not a lot. Quite, actually, quite a bit, because you know, I'm ter. I think it's terrible that cops are shooting black men a lot. But if you go on YouTube, there are a lot of videos of cops shooting uh, um, kind of like lower income white men, too. I think it has a lot of a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, status in society, like where you fall on the economic scale in terms of like if you're getting a shot or not. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that blacks don't get shot more, but I know a lot of white and anybody of any race who has a. a who has a certain demeanor or a pickup truck or says certain things has is probably going to get shot more often yeah. no matter what color they are. Yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah. and, but we're all trained to believe it's all blacks getting shot. Yeah. But, it, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad Phil isn't here tonight. Otherwise we'd have to hear 20 minutes of how wonderful cops are. You know? Well, you know, Ray's got a good point. What was Marjorie, uh, <clears throat> MSD, Marjorie Stallman Douglas high school. Those weren't black people. But it brought those yeah. people to the front so that they would get more white people to listen well, to them about it, how it, bad it, it is. Yeah, but, you know, also that community listened to them because yeah. they were white kids. If they were all black kids, I don't think they would have listened to them. They're not listening to the black kids in Probably Chicago, not. you know. No, nope, they're not. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I have to say that. Uh, what happened in in at Marjorie Stallman or whatever Douglas Stallman School was uh, was it was a product partially of the fact that these were white kids in a very white community that never sees violence, you know, and and so therefore it became oh my God look at what happened to these poor kids, but every day there are kids getting killed in Chicago in schools and in the streets and everybody's just going ah that's Chicago. You know? Yeah. And the There's so much racism. <laughs> yeah. There really is. It's and it's not just in, in Chicago and the South and stuff. If you go to Central California or the foothills or whatever, uh, like my my parents live up in uh, Angels Camp, California. And you might as well be oh, really pretty. in the. Oh. Yeah, but it, I mean, everyone is a ra There's such a racist community. It really is. Well, I don't see everyone, the video anymore. Oh, uh, you can't see it? What, uh, you, anyway, you, so and even in Angel Camp, but is is the racism more against white people or against uh, Hispanic people? Oh, oh no, against uh, no, they're all Trump, huge Trump supporters, huge. Like, yep. And, and um, <sighs> gross. I don't even want to. I don't want to say bad things about my family, but there are members of my family who believe <laughs> that Obama could never win, who absolutely hate Hillary to the core. But yeah, but they can't say why. Valley. But they can't say why. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, there was a recent study that said that the pretty much a psychiatrist, I don't know who it was, said that uh, Trump won because of white fear more than anything. Uh, I, it wasn't I, it wasn't jobs? I, and it I wasn't think, a yeah. trade or anything like I, that. I think that what you had going on there is you actually had Obama creating the atmosphere for Trump to exist. Because all you, know, you, you had Correct. you had a, a black president, and and this made uh, the whites feel very uncomfortable. And so when Trump came along, he was kind of the antidote, you know. And uh, that, that, that's why that's why they won't get rid of Pruitt because he's undoing all the stuff Obama did, no matter how corrupt he is. 
They won't get rid of him. Well, uh, he may have to get rid of him. You know, he, but well, Trump is playing to his base. He's just playing to his base. Yeah, but hey, yes, Kevin. You you saw the 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 Trump the that special that was on Netflix, and I found it pretty intriguing about how he went about, and it was even over the last several years before the the election, is how he channeled Jesse Ventura and the way that he uh, channeled how v Jesse Ventura ran his campaign up in Minnesota and how he went after people with shock, basically shock, and and, and drew people in that way. Well, and he all, tested that yeah. along the way in 2014 and whatever those those few years before when he was teasing them, saying he was going to he was going to uh, uh, run and then he wasn't going to and he kind of drew people in a little bit you know at a time and then finally when he finally ran he did the same thing and he's doing it today. Well, he ran as the anti politician. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and was those it, people uh, came out of the woodwork slowly and and and. And now he's got them all out. And if people don't think that what uh, Kevin is saying is true, they make the point that, in fact, uh, the way uh, Trump was dragged into that, all of that, was when he did some events for the WWF. Exactly. A and, and he got to meet Jesse Ventura, and he got to, you know, whatever. And, and then pulled in Roger Stone and got him to stir up the shit. Right. Exactly. That's uh, the next chapter. Yes. Yes, Renee. It's Alabama police, three Alabama police officers ripped the, ripped the clothes off of an innocent black woman at a Waffle House. Why is and it always in a happened. Waffle House these days? What, what's with Waffle that Houses? That's Phil. Yeah. Did, did, did you see the one in Starbucks where they, they, um, they arrested the black guys because one of them asked to use the bathroom but hadn't purchased anything? Yeah. 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 And, and one of them <laughs> Well, it's like that Bill was, Bill, Bill Maher was this week week was saying, you know, you can go to a Starbucks, sit there for five hours writing your screenplay and drinking one cup of coffee, and they don't throw you out. So what's with these people? They decided to throw these guys out, you know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And of course, well, I, went to, hmm? I went to a Starbucks. I'm sorry. I went to a Starbucks at Hunter's Point, Alex, and uh, there's one there, believe it or not. And uh it was like that there. I had to buy something, and I asked to use the restroom. They said, we, well, we won't give you the code until you buy something. And they actually wouldn't give me the code, and then he whispered it to me. Um, but maybe that's because they have problems with you know, I tried doing to, drug I, deals in I the bathroom. I tried to get a law passed in San Francisco, and um, Angela Alioto helped me get it somewhat passed. And that was that when I was in New York once, I was at a hotel – and as I'm standing there in the lobby, this bum walks in, and the guy who's the security at the hotel says, what are you doing in here? And he says, I have to use a bathroom desperately. And he said, well, you're not going to use ours. Get the hell out of here. And I went back to San Francisco with the thought that people should have a right in public places to use the toilet. If you're open for business, anybody, a bum, a whatever, should be able to walk in the door and use that toilet because... Otherwise, they're going to pee in our streets, and then we're going to say that's really terrible, you know. Oh, and so, oh my God. so it's, in San Francisco, yeah. I got Angela Aliota to pass something with the Board of Soups that any uh, uh, thing owned by the city had to allow people to use the restrooms, and so therefore, the Union Square Garage, which was owned by the city of San Francisco, had to open its bathrooms to anybody who needed them. You know. Yes, and since you and since you did that, um, also the uh, Sutter Stockton garage keeps their bathrooms open all day except for late at night. Yeah, so I mean, I but, felt uh, I, yeah. I tried to do something, you know. But it's still a problem because uh, none of the other businesses will let them go, and and as you know, there's not enough public bathrooms, and I, I don't have to explain what happens at eight o'clock on a uh, Monday morning in the Tenderloin. Uh, it's kind of disgusting. I yeah. had to walk. Yeah, it's, well, it's like it's like yeah. walking through Calcutta or something. It's incredible. Well, you know, uh, I mean, the stench and yeah, yep, 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 yep. yep. Um, so anyway, I, I think we've uh, discussed enough with uh, with um, um, Renee yeah, and, and, and I. And I but, uh, with, with, know, but hold on a second, uh, Bill, because I'm completely behind. I, I really wish our our knee jerk reaction didn't get rid of Al Franken 
because he was actually good at his well, job. Well, there was a perfect example of what I'm talking about. But he, that, yeah, that I'll give he you. was chased from office by, uh, by a woman, without, without Kirsten legal, Gillibrand, who I will never vote for ever again. Okay. Without re legal representation. And, uh, and yet he was, I think, a very admirable guy. And, I, and what he was doing, what he did, that photograph was a joke photo that the woman was in on. It wasn't like he, you know, suddenly was grabbing her tits. All right. Uh, and, and it turns out she's a right winger. And so she complained. And before you know it, you know, Al Franken is literally chased from audience uh, office because of the prevailing social media that that yeah. i'll give to you but I, for I, and i'll give it to him and, and i'm sure because we can i'm sure we can find a couple of other situations just like that you know he shouldn't have but the problem is is he shouldn't have held up the information about the part where the lady was really asleep there was another guy taking the taking the photo yeah. and we were just screwing around like we were adolescent 12 year olds yeah. he didn't come out with that until like what two four weeks later well, we didn't even know I, she I was don't know. I don't we didn't I, know. I, it wasn't real. I was mad at Al Franken because I felt he should have fought it more. You know, yeah, uh, I, I agree with you that. You know, I, I got mad at that. But uh, I Kirsten Gillibrand, forget it. What a fucking I, I'm, yeah. I can't now, even. The Louis C.K. thing. Well, that's the, completely different. Well, Louis C.K. <laughs> it was a case of uh, many years ago, not just the day before yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. He said to a bunch of women in a room, do you mind if I pull my penis out? And nobody said no, so he pulled it out. Uh, I don't know that that is that. <laughs> I don't know if that, that that's on the same level with Bill Cosby, you know, giving a woman a quaalude or a roofie. All right. No, and I agree with that too. But the point is, you, you guys, we don't want to see your dick. Well, don't pull the, it well, out the, well the, the, none of them said we mind seeing your dick. Keep it in your <laughs> pants. They sat there and watched, and nobody left the fucking room. And then years later, he's held to account for it. No, no, worse than that is these women are in comedy and no one broke out in laughter yeah, exactly. and hysterics. No one was rolling on the floor laughing. Their <laughs> oh, and by, the by the way, by the way, Louis C.K., another guy who made jokes in his act about exposing yourself. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, uh, the point is, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I mean. Is that it, a psychological it, thing? It, to, in other words, you don't, you know, you don't give somebody who murders somebody the same sentence as somebody who steals candy from a grocery store. All right. Well, and he, Louis C.K. got he forgot to tell him that he was at a urologist convention. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Patrick, hello. You've been listening to all this. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Well, there. I don't mean this as a bad word. I can't think of another word to use. But the dumbest statement that I heard, and I, I don't remember who said it, was that it should be only women allowed to vote on uh, sex discrimination or harassment. Uh, because I think we're forgetting that there are men that are also raped and sexually harassed and I think once we start categorizing or com compartmentalizing voting then it what subjects are only men allowed to vote on and then we're back to when women were they were doing one thing and men were doing the other and then it's the whole equality thing it done then we're going to put the blacks in this place and the Hispanics in this place because it's only a black issue. Only black people can vote on it. Hey, 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 Patrick, this is Tim, and I'm the one that said that. But I was being facetious because white, white men had made all the rules all these years, and I don't think they should make rules over women, which is what they've been trying to do. And what I think it, it would be over for a, part, for a temporary period of time if it's a women victim, the women should vote on it. If it's a men victim crime, the men should vote on it. That's all I was saying. Well, that's never going to work because that that just. You, but the, you, but the men the men have been making the rules for the last two hundred years. Oh shit! Now we change it 
we've got men and women making rules in Congress. We can't keep going well, back to me, the fucking past. You know, I was, I was, it's I, I, not very okay, many. Okay. Women are not represented properly in Congress. Hold a they second. Hold, like on, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second. I was thinking, I, I was thinking about this the other day. And uh, and I was going to bring it up, but I didn't know exactly in what context to bring it up. And now might be a good time to do it. Where Throughout it history, uh, who has run history? Men. That's why now, it's called now, history. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, my, not herstory. Well, no, herstory would come be. Come on, Gloria, stop. <laughs> you know, herstory <laughs> would be a stupid term. Uh, but my question is, uh, why is that? Is it because we suppressed people, or is it just men are so aggressive as by nature that they're the ones that take leadership positions? I'm sorry, you wouldn't even allow us to get an education. Women don't so, have the same. The women do not have the same aggressive nature as men. That's no, why. I, I in fact, that's why I like women. You know. <laughs> Really? That's, no, I mean, let's let's not. Kevin, let, I don't know. Let me go talk that? to my wife real quick. Let's not. Uh, unless they're, unless you they're met scorned, my wife. Alex. If they're scorned, to get out of the way. Yeah. Well, so hold on a second. I think anybody who's got who's who's vindictive or vicious in that manner, I don't think that's just a female. All right. Thing. So I what? Really uh, so so explain to me. Methods, explain but, to me this the the, the <clears> saying. She who he who uh, the, the, he or she who what rocks the cradle rules the world. You've heard the saying before, haven't you? Yeah, but it, we don't make that, the. That was a man saying to keep them in their place. Oh, I they can think they were right. very much. Uh, you're just trying to get laid, Tim. No, he's he's correct, but you know, no, I, 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 I mean, there's some truth to that. There's yeah. No. For, for the longest time, it's the same thing with, with minorities. You didn't educate them. We didn't allow them to vote. We didn't get them into the right schools. We don't give them health care. You, you, and you wonder why we're, the first baby is allowed into the, into the chamber in two, 20, 2018 is the first That's time we have a month. Well, you know, we also we don't mention right now. we don't mention she's also a double uh, uh, um, amputee, uh, and she's probably the first double amputee ever to be in Congress. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know, but because she was the first mother, that was a big deal. Yes, uh, Patrick. All right, and then you know, you bring up history, right? Well, people have been suppressed throughout different societies and different countries on different fucking continents, not just here. True. You go to Africa, and you've got all sorts of bullshit going on between tribes. You had the same thing here in the United States between Native uh, people, where you had different bands that were fighting different bands mm -hmm. for land and whatever else. And, you know, the thing is, to keep bitching about history, and going back, we've changed history. We've moved ahead. It may not be perfect, but we're moving in the right direction. There oh, are God. women in Congress. There are women that have run for president and legitimately run. You know, it's, yeah, it's not perfect, but Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, you know, not everything moves to the speed of light. Yeah, but see, that's not... Okay, so let's talk about the black guy who got kicked out of Starbucks. Uh, when did we free black people and give them the right to vote? Hundreds of years, a hundred and a half years ago? So he can't even buy a cup of coffee because it's okay that the bitch behind the manager's shirt is racist? And, and it's okay. And that just happened this week. So it's like you're saying we came far, but we, we're not even close to where we ought to be. Nate, you're taking just a little incidences like that that are being addressed. My understanding is Starbucks has addressed that. So True, but that was last week. So as you say that we've come far, I'm like a black man can't even buy look, a cup of look, coffee. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, you know, let me. Let's go to what Jack said last night, that humanity in and of itself is terrible, but there's individuals that are good. And what you're doing is you're painting you know, you're, you're taking everything with humanity, and that's true, but you've also got very good people, a lot of good people, and you've got individual assholes 
within society. Yeah. And you can't paint everybody well, with the same all, brush. Also, also, you know, we take something like the incident at Starbucks, which was not an incident of Starbucks policy. OK, True. it was an incident in which somebody who was working at Star Starbucks made a very bad decision. All right. How many of these stores do they have all over the country? They can't monitor every single person who runs these Starbucks. All right. And some of them, by the way, are franchises and not owned by Starbucks. A large amount of them are owned yeah, by Starbucks. That? however. And uh, uh, so Starbucks then does a big mea culpa towards that we're closing down for a half a day on such and such a day so we can hold training for people. But probably most of the people who run these Starbucks don't even need that training. Just by their own intuition, they wouldn't do that. Okay? The fact is Starbucks are being held to account because of the actions of one person uh, that, you know, they didn't at that moment did not have control over. Uh, and, and so they're trying to do their mea culpa by making everybody happy by saying we're going to have a, you know, a, uh, a, 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 a whole day of training or a half a day of training. Uh, I, I, but they just tried to, they tried to keep the problem under control. The, the, uh, they did all the right problem. things. They, they did, did all they the did right things. They did all the right things, but I, I yeah, don't think they they, I don't even think they had to go that far. That, but they went that far to keep the public happy. You well, know. Starbucks is worldwide. If 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 somebody doesn't feel comfortable going into a Starbucks, you, I mean, with the continent of most of Europe, you know, it's just you can't. You can't have that well, running around. Star Starbucks also has. Uh, oh, you got wind problems there. Uh, uh, okay, let me turn it off. Ray. Okay, we're getting. Okay, I'll turn it off. Nice view of your walk though today. Uh, uh, you know that Starbucks uh, does pretty good by their people. You know they give them. I think they have. Uh, they get pay them okay, and they give them uh, health insurance, and they give them uh, 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 college, college tuition. tuitions. And things yep. like that, you know, they're they're a very kind of moral company, and to simply try and assail them for one incident in one store by one person is, right. I think, unreasonable. Okay, I, I I have no problem, and and they corrected it graciously and quickly, and they addressed it, and I hope that makes the 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 people that were. Uh, shit on feel fine. I hope they're okay with what happened. And if they're okay with what happened, then I'm okay with what happened. Well, I thought yeah. Starbucks did it responsibly. Uh, and they were very, they were very good at the way they handled it. You know, they, so did they, they in oh, fact should be the textbook for how to handle a situation like that. You know. Did you hear that Subway is closing 500 United States locations? Well, uh, good. That means less bad sandwiches. 500? That's a lot of closures. Yeah. Why are they closing? I'm, not, I'm trying to find out there's if they no were um, there's franchisees. No there's no technology I can think of that's putting them out of work, you know? Subway restaurants are owned 100% by franchise owners. Oh. So they're putting, wow, boy, I don't want to be on the other end of that. Those poor people are going to lose well, a lot of money. Well, what about the franchise Thanks. owners? Don't they get to keep their franchises? Well, if you're closing the shop, what, what is exactly are you keeping? What did I see? There's a place in Alaska where there's a guy who has the one blockbuster that's left in the United States. No. <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> and somehow he keeps it going by buying videotapes or DVDs and stuff like we that. We should just send him all of ours. Well, we uh, I think, all for free. what was it? John Oliver did something <laughs> for them. <laughs> He bought up a bunch of like movie memorabilia and props and sent it to them so they could have it at their store so that they would make their store more valuable. That's yeah. a great idea. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, a lot of these things, you know, I mean, Netflix, there aren't any more. Netflix, does Netflix still mail you movies? I think they still do that. Mm -hmm. because they but it's not the major part of they their try, well they tried to, they tried to stop it and some people complained. They actually liked yeah. getting these things in the mail. Well, think about think about moms. This is a wonderful thing for a mom. Yeah, you go way, online, you go do ever whatever, and go work with the kids, and the movies just show up. By the way, we're so. home with now at home with uh, uh, with Ray Renati, who's probably you know. There's his kitchen. And there's there's uh, uh, is din is dinner ready, Ray, or has it already? You've already had dinner already. Uh, no, 
It's ready now. It's ready. Hi, now. Mrs. Ray Renardi. Hello. <laughs> They're saying hello to you. <laughs> Ms. Renardi. <She's... laughs> they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't like it. <laughs> well, no, she said, go away. Get the camera out of my face. I'm wearing a hoodie, is what exactly. she said, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, a, that's the computer you yeah. usually call us from, right? What? That's the computer you usually call us from, right? I know this is my phone. No, no, but I'm saying what you're showing us is the computer. Oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, that's my computer. Yeah, because that was my computer. Because that's the shot we normally yeah. have of you. Yeah. yeah, there's my computer. There's my mic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah. I want to thank Ray from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to walk again for the first time in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> watching. Him. What did I? Do? By watching him, uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's like a, it's yeah. like a playing the game Sims. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 yeah, Sims. exactly. Yeah. So Ray is uh, Patrick's avatar. That's Sorry, right. Jeff. No, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, Jeff. Yeah. You have your hand. Up. So I'm I'm curious about one thing that I found out today, that the president of France has a very good-looking wife who also yeah. is yeah. 25 years older than him. It's exactly opposite of the Trumps. And he used to be the student, and she was the teacher. Ooh! Ooh. Oh, yeah. 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 But this uh, is and they've been married this for quite friends. some time. <laughs> this, is, this, is a, this is what, uh, like 15 years into their marriage already? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't they change every other weekend, though? No, that that's Donald. Don't be the teacher. By the way, Donald, I, Donald today may have nailed the coffin shut. Uh, he, you know, he was on that airplane and he said, uh, "I, I, I, I know uh, Cone. I uh, he's, a, he's a friend of mine, but I've never had anything to do with him. Nothing to do with Stormy Daniels or any of that deal, right?" Today on Fox and Friends, he says, "Well, I never use Michael Cohn for anything except he's working on that Stormy Daniels thing." I can tell you why, Alex. Do you want to know why? <clears throat> why? Think about it. What else happened? I think it's Giuliani. I think Giuliani wants him to to step back and throw Cohn under the bus because they can't say both of them. Can, he no, but this wasn't throwing. He this wasn't throwing him under the bus. This was Trump throwing himself under the bus. Yeah, he had a no, pretty good rant on Cohen Fox. under the bus because he said Cohen was not his attorney. That he, he said no legal. He, he said that he, no. He said he was his attorney. He did small stuff for him. He said tiny, and, tiny, yeah. and he then he said. And that's he's doing that Stormy Daniels thing, or he was involved. Yeah, and he had a whole that's, slew yeah, of attorneys. Nice. Yeah, yeah. He, he 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 was he was all <laughs> over the place this morning on Fox. Today he will that he nailed his coffin shut with that statement. Yes, Patrick. Maybe he meant that Cohen was nailing uh, Stormy Daniels. What? <laughs> <laughs> but it, boom! We need a. A toilet flush thingy or some some sound effect for that. That was a good. Well, we'd have to have <laughs> Phil for that, and you know, it's a Phil free night. So. As a final act, Michael Cohen. I heard, this, all the I heard Stormy Daniels. What? Yeah. What'd you say, Ray? As as as, as Ray, what were you saying? I had I heard I heard that Alex. I heard Trump say that, and he and he said it in such a way as though it was like a bunch of bullshit or something like well, that. No, he's handling that stormy. He's ha handling that stormy Daniels thing. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, as it, if it was. A, but he shouldn't have said nothing. Or, you know, if the, when the impeachment yeah, exactly. comes, those tapes at Fox are going to get played back. You can bet your life on that. You know, what? A well, they used it in court yeah. already. The prosecutors used it in court within an hour. Of him saying that. <laughs> what an idiot. That's why they have a special master, because they said very little of the material they've got is client uh, protected. It's not privileged conversations, because it's mostly business, and he had little to do with Trump, as far as legal stuff. Yeah. It was all business stuff. Right. Stormy Daniel stuff is not necessarily legal stuff. It's right. business. Right. Now, as a final act, Michael Cohen was caught paying each of the jurors in the Bill Cosby trial, $130,000 a piece. 
so they could uh, get uh, the scandals of Trump off the news for most of the day. Okay. Is okay, that, that was a good one. But that's who said oh. that. Oh. Well, I turn on I, all the all the yeah, yeah. The, the prosecutor yeah, and the Cosby was on for an hour. <laughs> no, see, he's our, he's only allowed one conspiracy theory a night and on this show. So if if you like his conspiracy theories, you have to meet us over on Jack and Amy's show because he's allowed to run free. Okay. It's called a joke, not okay. a conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Well, it was it was said let's very. Talk about, uh, let's very talk about let's talk about Candyman. Candyman. Oh yeah, Randy Jackson bailed out. No, what, what? no, you know what he was handed. He was nobody's going to stay on as White House doctor. Do you know what he hands out? What's making he hands out Ambien, which we know can make you kind of loony. Uh, I heard you know what that. What else he hands out? No. Pro Vigil, which is like Ritalin, and of course the other story <laughs> is well, Trump may be taking a Ritalin before he does his rallies. Oh, that makes sense. Well, that'll that keep him from snorting it. it up, won't it? Yeah, he might have. I think he had he a real one this morning, man. That guy was off the wall. <laughs> who is He's that? Gotta be. Who, who is like that press conference? He was off the wall. Who was Elvis's There's, doctor? Doctor, or what's his name? Who used to give him all the pills well, and everything? I figure that uh, if he were alive today, Trump would make him a you know surgeon general. Head of, yeah, it's good. Well, you know who he should make uh, secretary of the VA? McMaster. He'd be perfect. Yeah. The master should come back, and he could handle the VA. Yeah, well, and you honestly believe that that uh, Trump's going to do something nice with McMaster, right? He's not going to well, do it. his time. I think there's a human in there somewhere. I just maybe I'm being a human in hopeful. and where in Trump? There's not. Yeah. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Not a. You he saw. Well, he would. His, but he, he doesn't but he, even care about his wife's birthday. He doesn't care about his wife. He was sleeping with a porn star while his wife was pregnant. He doesn't give a yeah. shit about his By wife. By the way, he only slept with her once. The one he slept with for nine months was the play, was McDougal. the playmate of the year, McDougal. And and I yeah, think that she, poor woman. I think she's even a bigger story. You know, she's crazy. But she, the only difference is, is that. there's nothing illegal where McDougal, at least nothing we can lay at the president's feet that's illegal. Uh, but the payment to Stormy Daniels could be considered a, contra- a political contribution, which goes above and beyond what a normal contribution is legally supposed to be. I feel so bad they, for they that. They confiscated oh, 16 cell phones from Michael Cohen. 16 <gasps> cell phones. Really? Yeah, they were called you're burners. Going, you're talking burners. about Blackberries, stuff going back 20, 30 years. Okay, well, that's not fair. No, I've still, I mean, I've, maybe maybe they're not. You, he doesn't have contact. Use them all yeah, anymore. I've, I've but he got, doesn't ever give. I still away. got an iPhone three over right. here somewhere. You know, I've got <laughs> cameras that go back twenty years. He, he, he never gets rid of them. He keeps them. Yeah. He's a for, Yeah. For fuck's sake! Yeah. If you have a decent phone, please give it to Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> please. <laughs> Please I'm, give it to Bubbles. I'm willing to give him one of my phones, but he's got to go Bugs. out and get. Uh, a um, um, uh, internet service provider. He doesn't have one, or get a deal Hookers. from uh, get a deal yeah. <laughs> get a deal from AT and T so that he can turn on the phone. <laughs> then I'll give him the phone. Yes, Patrick. Is there any? Is there any, <laughs> is there any <laughs> wait, what what is that? Is That's that, it, Crystal. It, it, is that a broken iPhone? I've yeah. got two 3Gs downstairs. <laughs> Listen, I've got I've got uh, I've got camcorders that go all the way back. I had a really nice one that I really liked, which I found. I went in and the screen was broken. Now, but put, put it up. Let's see the whole. Uh, let's see all the damage. We want to see this train wreck, please. <laughs> I'm so happy it's not my phone. <laughs> what did you do I even to got it? The box for Here's the my thing. brownie. That's my wife. <laughs> There's your brownie. See that goes Hello? back. This is my I, I, I use a flip yeah. phone. You know, I once bought, I when phone. I was a kid, I bought a kit, and I made one of those brownies. You could actually make oh, really? the brownies. Oh, yeah, yeah, you get the box and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I used to take pictures with this when I was a kid. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. They were good. They Big did the slides. Job. Yes. Oh, that's uh, Pat- your Patrick has wow. a little dial right here. Yes, Patrick. Did Bubbles ever explain why he doesn't have internet access or me. why he has a gotten a provider i mean he's got a telephone bottom, right? bottom line and i'll ask him next time i talk to him 
to explain it a little further, but I think he's just never cared. You know? It's like you well, got to realize there are people in this world that don't care whether they have an iPhone or not. You, you know? don't need an iPhone. I mean, you just need a phone. Dial up to even check. Yeah. I, well, he has dial up service and he has, uh, he has uh, dial up uh, internet a connection <laughs> that goes <laughs> me, me, <laughs> my brother had that for the longest time and he finally got infinity and he says yeah they got like this 100 100 megabit thing and it, everything pops just like that it just fires right up i go i've been telling you that for five years for christ's well, I'll sake i'll tell you you know i was always in to technology but the day that i went from dial up to uh, a, a, a you know a fast line I had to get used to the idea that my internet was always on. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had to get with that concept. I mean, doesn't it ever go off? No, it's always on. It's always there. Yeah. What? It's always there. I have there. to wait for that. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Well, they stole your identity, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. I, I, I went right from dial to up to uh, you went from fiber, fiber optic. Bye. Oh, Good night, Ray. Oh, Ray's going. Ray's, Ray's <laughs> about to die. We, we got. Okay. See we, you all later. okay. Bye. It, it, see last, you it lasted long enough. It's almost just to make it to two okay. minutes before the show okay. is off. <laughs> oh, I can, I can, I can wait. I can wait two minutes. Oh, okay. And then recharge <laughs> yeah. that damn phone. You know. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for the walk, by the way, Ray. That was very nice and pleasant. Oh, you're welcome. And it's the most exercise that Patrick's gotten in years. So. And yeah, me. it's like that's not true. Patrick goes out right doing that his workout all the time. Yeah, often. But, I mean, uh, but not yeah. walk. I mean, oh. I, I was actually able to walk, and and I I should have called in earlier, but I I wasn't able because I could have had like a longer walk. But <laughs> twenty minutes was good. I <laughs> my minutes. 15 years, I'm happy. My legs are kind of <laughs> getting weak, so I got to start doing some walking because I, uh, uh, I, I, this winter just made me too. Uh, what can I call it? Who has a who, who has a drone that they can fly? What, what's that have to do with it? Well, instead of walking, you can just fly around too. Uh, yeah, I just oh. wonder if anybody used a, a drone camera. Well, I just want to start walking again because if we go to, on a vacation, I want to be able to walk. I mean, I remember. You know, walking through the Alps and doing things like that, and I just don't know if I got the strength to do it these days. You know, so I got to get myself that's back it. in shape. You know, yep, and and walking in Europe, you're <laughs> walking on a lot of cobblestones. That's correct. Oh yeah. man, your ba does your well, back start to hurt well, because in, of those in my things. case they would be hobblestones. Hobbles. Yeah. There's Dr. Ronnie with you, Alex. Yeah. There's our theme song, our, our very popular, well-known theme song. And uh, I thank everybody for listening tonight because I noticed we had a lot of people listening. They like hearing Renee and I argue. I love her dearly, but, you know. Good night, good night Gracie. She's a, she's, a sex, night. she's a sexist pig. What can good I night, say? She's the, she's the uh, Phil Meyer with other parts. You know, uh, so. no, gross. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least neither one of us have a prostate, so yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you have a lot in common now. Yes, uh, uh, cool. Jeff, thank you, thank you, Ray. Boy, I hear the play is just spectacular, and I'm so happy for you. And I'm glad you're back again. We missed you, we absolutely missed you. And I think he's frozen now. I think he froze, he won't be here tomorrow. Okay, but uh, I just... Oh, I froze? I know. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I don't know you won't be here tomorrow, but when, when you're not doing stuff, please call us. We love having you on. Tim? Well, I will. Thanks. Tim, man. thank you. Renee, thank you. Of course, uh, Kevin, thank you a lot. And, of course, Patrick, always a pleasure. Break a leg, Ray. Yeah. Uh, thank I'm, you. I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, all these people here uh, are going to do a big wave goodbye now, okay? Wave goodbye to them. There we go. Okay, thanks, people. Uh, anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Somebody said I got a gut. I don't have a gut anymore, do I? Look, I don't have a gut. I'm a skinny mini. That's what it's all about. Oh, wait a minute. I got to hang up on these people. Otherwise, they'll be seeing each other still, and they can still talk to each other. And when they talk to each other and I'm not part of it, they probably talk about me. 
let me see. Okay, we'd be disconnected if you want to go offline. Yes, I do. And then I want to, yeah, I, I went offline. What? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I got so much to do here and still uh, try and do a radio show. Uh, or not radio. This is internet. What am I saying? I'm old fashioned. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm through for tonight. Tomorrow, uh, just next is Jack and Amy. And at uh, 1 o'clock, it's Connections. Tomorrow night, 9.30, uh, Damian Chaplin will be here. And then uh, tomorrow night, I guess Girlfriend will be here. And, uh, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, good night, everybody. Why is that theme playing? I don't want that theme playing. Let's go back to the other theme. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.